Last time, we ironed out our launch method after several failed attempts. Oh! But medicine to flight, disaster struck. In this video, we'll battle several more setbacks as we finally make Kingfisher flyable. We really should have brought a spade next time. It's actually in better condition than we thought. It is in one piece. Hello, we're the Mac Initiative, and we're attempting to build the world's fastest jet powered model aircraft. We're continuing to develop our 60% subscale electric prototype as we refine our launch, flight dynamics, and landing before we risk our prized jet engine in the air. We've made the difficult decision to scrap the Mark I Kingfisher design in favour of a 3D printed Mark II design which will move the jet engine 150mm further forward, removing the need for a ballast. We'll cover this design properly in a future video. We reflected these changes on our subscale test bed and went back to the field, aiming to finally do some auto-tuning of our autopilot. Right, ready when you are. The flight started with a perfect launch, however, upon switching to auto-tune, the initial gains were too low, producing a sluggish response. When switching back to manual, the aircraft rolled significantly before entering an unrecoverable dive. At this point we got pretty good at rebuilding the aircraft and within 24 hours we had it assembled and ready for another flight. To improve the controllability I doubled the roll rate P gains, increased the pitch and bank angle limits as well as reducing the auto-tune window down to 20%. This means that we'll be more controllable but need more tuning flights. Well we learned the hard way what happens when you don't pull stick back on the launcher. We glued the aircraft back together and within an hour, we were ready to go again. Yes! I can't think it's in the air off the state of the day. The flight started off well, but the pilot encountered a weird rolling oscillation in manual mode, which eventually led to him having to perform a hard landing. We tasked our aerodynamicist Max with finding some mitigations to this. So I had a look at dihedral wingtips to try and introduce some passive roll stability, but CFD analysis showed that they didn't add much passive roll stability, and instead they really negatively affected the formation of our leading edge vortex. And on a delta wing like Kingfisher's, the leading edge vortex is everything in terms of generating the high lift we need for takeoff and landing. So instead, we beefed up the servo mounts in the control linkages to try and take out all the play in the system and also increased our wing area by 10% to try and give us a little more wiggle room in control at low speed. Dan redesigned the CAD model to reflect Max's aerodynamic requests. Meanwhile, I installed an FPV system to aid the pilot with flying. Oh my god, it actually works. This features a camera and a VTX in a housing above the inlet, as well as a 5.8 gigahertz antenna in the tail fin. Thank you. 
in one piece. Oh, it's, in, it's in all pieces, it's, it's immaculate. At last, we had finally proven that we could land the Kingfisher. Now it was time to change the batteries and try it again with the new autopilot games. Beautiful! One piece! It's in one piece! It's perfect! You can fly again! <laughs> so we were really happy with the flight, but even after all of our changes, that oscillation in roll still persisted. And although our pilot kept it under control, it's a really high workload and it's something that, while we have some play in the design, we're keen to remove. So this rolling oscillation most likely comes from wing rock. On a delta wing, a lot of the lift comes from these leading edge vortices. And what can happen is they can grow, generating more lift, sucking that side up, and then break off, causing it to drop. And you get this steady back and forth roll oscillation between port and starboard. So going forward, we're gonna to have to take a combination approach of both CFD and flight tests. And the first thing we're gonna do is sharpen our leading edge, which should strengthen and stabilize the vortex core. So there you have it. Thank you for your patience with this. We appreciate that everyone wants to see the jet fly as soon as possible, but we're keen to de-risk the flight as much as possible with this inexpensive subscale aircraft to minimize the chances of us destroying our jet engine. Nevertheless, we've made lots of progress and we're getting much closer to that flight now. Overall, we're super happy and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.